your path, your yoga, steady, consistent, constant, not easily distracted. That's you in this moment right now. Welcome to your yoga. I'm Jan. This is 316 Yoga. This is Piper, my little Easter bunny dog. <laughs> and this is your yoga for life practice. This is our uh, Friday plus yoga plus. <laughs> it's, it's yoga plus lots of things. It's yoga plus Pilates. It's yoga plus bar. It's yoga plus weights. It's a fun practice. I hope you like it. Every day of our practices is different. And today is kind of fun. I hope you like it. Check out all of our practices every day of the week on YouTube and Facebook. This is a one hour long practice, but if you stick around for 10 minutes, good on you. 10 minutes is better than nothing at all. But most importantly, as the bottom of the screen says, do what's right for your body. It's your body, your one and only body, your temple, your body. It's the one body you have. Take care of it. Don't do things that hurt. Don't do things that hurt. Don't do things that hurt it, your body. If something hurts, back out of it. Don't do it. If it's not right for you today, just don't do it. I'm going to make some modifications today, and I hope you make modifications too. Take it easy on you. That was an Eagles song, wasn't it? <laughs> Take it easy on you. Take it easy. Don't stress over your yoga. Have fun. The word to think about today is start over. Start over, start over again and again and again. Each day is a new beginning. Each pose is a new beginning. Each breath is a new beginning. Just have fun with it. You're gonna need some props today. Props or no props at all, it's up to you. I'm gonna use a yoga ball. It's, um, uh, this one is, brand name is a bender ball. It's a ball that's real squishy. You don't inflate it all the way because you want it to be, create an unstable surface. I'm gonna have some water. Always wanna have some water handy. I'm gonna use two weights. Don't have weights? Don't worry about it. You don't have to use them, but it's a little resistance. These are little three pound weights. Maybe you use some extra water bottles. Just don't stress. That's the big thing, don't stress. If you wanna use your resistance band in lieu of your weights, you can use that as well. So have that handy. Two blocks, we're gonna use those to bring the ground up to us. I'm gonna use those a lot today. Um, personally, maybe you are, maybe you aren't, it's up to you. An eye shade and a little hand towel, hand towel to slip under your knees or double as the eye shade in the end. So those are the props that you can use or nothing at all is just fine too. We always lock in a stress number in the beginning, stress number on a scale of one to five, one to 10. What's going on with you? She is stressless. All right, little river band. Thank you very much. Take it easy on me. Okay, yeah, take it easy on you. Little river band. Oh, how fun. Reminds me of uh, high school. All right, okay, let's start. You got your stress number locked in. Let's come on up to standing. Bring the ball with you if you have it and if you want to use it. So come on up to a standing position. And let's place the ball Woo, between our thighs. Place it high up in between your thighs. Keeps you nice and stable. Another thing you might wanna do is to have a chair. A chair here could be uh, a nice and steady uh, thing to hold on to. You can stand up against your wall as well. You decide what works for you. Squeeze the ball as we start over. Think of it as fresh. Every pose is fresh. Every pose is fresh. Lift your arms high up to the sky. Gaze up toward maybe where the ceiling and your wall meet and just find length here. Take a deep breath in, <sighs> and a big sigh and breath out. Take your breaths in through your nose to start. Well, you're gonna take them all in through your nose, and out through your mouth as we begin. <sighs> sigh it out, let it go, really make it audible. Now bring your hands down to your hips. Lift up onto your uh, toes. So lift your heels up, lift and lower, just kind of find your foundation. We're going to talk a little bit about your foundation today. I think you're going to see something fun. Speaking of Little River Band in high school, you'll think you're going to see something kind of fun. All right, so lift up on your toes. A little higher, a little lower. Maybe hold them for a second. Bring them on down. Find what is comfortable for you. Come down onto your heels. Lift your toes up. Give them a wiggle. And just keep going up on the toes, waking your calves, awakening your ankles, your feet. And always, always, whatever you do, look for the things that you can do in your practice and just in life. Look for the things you can do with the energy and the focus that you have. Remember, little wins pave the way for big wins. You can't do the big things if you don't do the little things. All right, squeeze the ball nice and tightly. Lift and lower onto the toes. And when you're ready, your ankle's getting tired or your calves getting tired, let's come down to a solid foundation, solid foundation beneath your feet. Wiggle your toes, plant your feet, lift your arms up again, stretch. 
reach. Now you're aware of your foundation, the strength in your low body. Interlace your fingers, send your palms up to the sky. Gentle sways from side to side for your palm tree pose. <sighs> Breathe. Maybe you've got to bend in your elbows. That's a fine modification if that feels good for you. Or maybe you challenge yourself to send your palms a little higher to the sky. Maybe you don't like interlaced fingers. Maybe you want your arms parallel to each other and you're swaying from side to side here. Maybe when you sway to one side, you let the bottom arm drop down the outside of your thigh as you reach through the other fingers. Come on back up. Give the other side equal time. Breathe. Come on back up to the midline of your body. Remove your hands and place your hands behind your low back. Fingers can be pointing down or pointing up. Try that one. That's kind of hard. Squeeze your elbows together. Think of your chest lifting up, Mrs. Maisel style. Breathe. Gaze up to where the ceiling and the wall meet or take more of a back bend. If you would like, you know, press your chest forward. Send your gaze up toward the sky. Take as deep a back bend as is right for you today. Ah, and then as you exhale, hinge forward. Bend forward at the waist. Let your arms come down toward the earth. Hinge forward as much as is right for you today. Maybe you work the crown of your head toward the earth as you glance back toward your knees or your navel. Do what feels right, nothing more, nothing less. On your inhale, sweep your arms up. Come back to your extended mountain arms. Put a bend in your knees, and this is called chair pose, Utkatasana. So bend a little bit more. Send your bottom toward the back of the room. Squeeze the ball. Hold here, and when you're ready, start to do arm circles. They can be big, they can be small, whatever you want. As the arms come down, knees bend deeper. As the arms come up, knees straighten. So do some big arm circles. As big as you like, they don't have to be big at all. You're just getting the blood flowing, circulation. Feels good, it feels good to move. Just hard to start. <sighs> when you're ready, arm circles in the other direction. Knees in as deep a bend as feels good for you. <sighs> Breathe. Finish up, come on back up to standing, hands to purse center, close your eyes, take a deep breath in. <sighs> And a deep breath out through your mouth, settle into your shoulders, breathe. Deep breath in, and deep breath out. Let's do big coat swing. Let your arms be heavy down by your sides. Shoulders are over your hips. Maybe you close your eyes to challenge your balance or maybe you keep them open. Arms are heavy, start to sway. Sway, what a nice word. Sway from side to side. Gaze over one shoulder than the other. Take the sway as deep as is right for you today. Tap your hip, tap your backside, breathe. Maybe you're taking your, your twists nice and big. Do what is comfortable for you today. Let your gaze go toward the back of your room and breathe. When you're ready, finish up. Finish up and let's do ragdoll pose. This is a great one for your low back. Give the ball a big squeeze. Take those I dream a genie arms, another reference to the 70s, right? Hold right here. And when you're ready, exhale, hinge forward. Hinge forward, keeping those I dream a genie arms. Look at your feet when you get down here. Are your feet should be about hip width distance apart. Work the crown of your head toward the earth. So you'll bend a lot further than I am right now, if that feels good for you. And when you are ready, start to sway, bringing one elbow back toward the knee, then the other. Breathe, sway, let it feel good. Don't forget to squeeze that ball. And if you don't have the ball, no big deal. The ball just helps you be more stable, I think. And it's just as nice to activate the low body as you strengthen your foundation. Finish up with your ragdoll pose. Bring the arms back to the midline of the body and just breathe here for a second. Big, long inhale lets the spine lengthen. Big, long exhale. You hollow out the belly and maybe look even further toward the back of your room. As you're ready, release your fingertips toward your mat. Come on down to your knees. Now, you can place the ball at the top of your mat and we're gonna do child's pose. Lots of ways to take it. You can begin by having your toes touching Big toes touching, tops of your feet on your mat, and sink your hips back to your heels. Arms can be down by your sides, palms face up, fingers reaching toward the bottom of your mat. You can bring your forehead down to your mat or to a setup of blocks, however you have them. Adjust the height, there's lots of possibilities here. Bring your forehead down, 
the idea is to kind of create a long straight back and rest here. Maybe your head's on the blocks, maybe it's on the mat. An option is your extended child's pose. Spread your knees wide, big toes touch, hips go back, and again, head comes down to either your blocks or your mat, and your arms are reaching long to the top of your mat. <sighs> Sigh it out, let it go. Child's pose, a pose of complete surrender to yourself. Just treat yourself and do well by this one and only body of yours. Knees can be spread wide, arms can be reaching long to the top of your mat, forehead can be on the blocks or the mat. If you got your forehead on your mat, you might want to reach for that ball at the top of your mat and just kind of move it a little bit from side to side. Let it feel good in your shoulders. Breathe. When you're ready, close your mouth and breathe in and out of your nose only if that feels good for you. Deep breaths in and deep breaths out. Yesterday in our restorative practice, we uh, emphasized the sound of like ocean waves on a tropical island beach. Just hear the sound of your breath in the back of your throat in this moment. Deep breath in and deep breath out. When you're ready, if you're ready, let's press on to a neutral tabletop position. So bring your knees under your hips, your wrists under your shoulders, neutral tabletop. In your neutral tabletop, let's do our forearm stretch. So your fingers, have them point back towards your knees. Fingers pointing towards your knees, your forearms, the eye of your elbow shining forward. Wiggle your hips this way and that way, forward and back. Just feel a nice stretch in your forearms. If you'd like, you can take it back further and bring your bottom back further, bringing the stretch into your fingers. How does that feel? If it feels good, enjoy it. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Hi, Liz. How are you? Hello, Lynn. Hello, Gracie. Hello, Linda. Tammy. Roger Stan. Not Roger Stan. Roger, comma, Stan, comma, Esther. Nancy. Nancy, how are you? I am glad that you are here. Betty and Pam. Rena and Tim. Bert and Pam, Lisa, Kelly, Jennifer. All right, I'm glad you're here. All right, you've stretched out your forearms. How do they feel? Bring your fingers back to a natural position and then just wiggle your fingers. Get the little whoo, tingles out of your forearms. All right, toes pose. We start out early because that's our foundation. Take your block, tuck your toes under so they're going up towards your shins. Place your block behind your heels. If you don't have a block, no big deal. Sit back on your heels. Or you, I guess you could sit on your ball too. But just sit back, stretch the toes. You feel this stretch in the sole of your foot, don't you? Oh my goodness. All right, stay here. I got some fun things to tell you. You can place your hands on your thighs, hands to prayer center, or remember ragdoll pose, those arms, bring them behind your low back, reach toward opposite elbow creases, gaze forward, or close your eyes and steady yourself. Let your shoulders relax away from your ears, and let's work on this strong foundation in your feet. Okay, so your feet, your foundation, it's your path, it's your journey, stay on it and move your feet to keep going forward. Just keep going forward, little by little. Seven out of 10 people have foot pain. That's not good, is it? And I think, you know, years of high heel wearing and bad shoes and ill-fitting shoes lead to that. But seven out of 10, that's a lot of people who have painful feet. This pose hopefully will help alleviate some of that discomfort. If this position is painful for you, you know, hinge forward and come out of it, but just hang here for a little bit longer. So each of your feet has 26 bones. So that's 26 times two is 52 bones in both of your feet. That's a lot of bones. It's 25% of your whole body's bones are down there in your feet. There are 33 joints, 107 ligaments, and 19 muscles and tendons. Your feet are your foundation of your body and they gotta be able to support your body. They allow you to stand, to jump, anybody jump? <laughs> to run and just to walk and they absorb all the damaging, oh, all the damaging shock that your heels get every time your heel hits the ground. All right, so here is a picture I'd like you to look at. See if you remember these. So open your eyes, look at the screen. Do you remember these? Dr. Scholl's, Dr. Scholl's, remember those shoes? 
All right, so Dr. Scholl said, if your feet have imbalances or weaknesses, they travel all the way up your body. Not a real deep quote, but just kind of understandable. So think about it. Think of the shock going up through your entire body. So Dr. Scholl was right. I don't know about his shoes. I don't know. He's a quirky guy. So there's his picture, Dr. Scholl. He was a quirky guy. He carried a skeleton of a foot in his pocket around. Hmm. And we're almost done. Hang on. Hopefully this is getting your mind off your toes. He, uh, a quote he said was early to bed, early to rise, work like hell, and advertise. So I think he had that part kind of wrong. I think William Scholl, Bill Scholl, needed some yoga in his life. Anyway, all right, that's your flashback to the 70s. I hope it was fun. Let's come out of this pose. All right, bring your arms around the front if you did ragdoll. Circle your wrists, grasp your fingers, do an infinity sign or two. Oh my goodness, we are done. Come on into a neutral tabletop. How did you like it? Oh my gosh, did you get your mind off your toes? Lift your feet up, squeeze and scrunch your toes, circle your ankles, tap your feet out on your mat. Oh, that was good. All right, that was a long toes pose. I should have timed it. All right, neutral tabletop, cat cow, tuck your chin to your chest, tuck your tailbone under, chin to your chest, tuck it under, arch your back up to the sky. Do the opposite, take it into cow pose, lift your tailbone up to the sky, let your chin go up, up, up as you gaze up. Let's switch it again. Cat pose, cow pose. Cat, tuck your chin, tuck your tailbone. Inhale, cow, lift the crown of your head up toward the sky and your tailbone too. A few more cat cows, let it be, good for your spine. And then finish, neutral tabletop. Let's go into our beloved pose, bird dog. And you can do this on the ball if you want. All right, so for a bird dog pose, maybe if you got the ball, put it under your right knee. Put it under your right knee, draw your right toes toward your shin, and balance here. Now, weight is pushing into your mat. Stay strong, shoulders over your wrists. Maybe you lift your left leg up. Ooh, embrace those little wiggles in uh, that foundational knee if it's on the ball. Left heel goes toward the back of the room. Press hard into the earth. Left leg is extended long. What's a bird dog do? And they point, right? So point. Point with your right arm. Lift your right arm. Fingers are spread wide. Thumb up toward the sky. Find your balance here. If you're not on the ball, it's still plenty of a great challenge. All right, if you would like, bend the right elbow and the left knee. Have them touch under the midline of your body and then reach. Reach far, reach far through your heel, through your fingertips. A few more if you like. Touch the elbow to the knee. Reach, stretch. And when you're ready, oh my goodness, let's finish. Right arm down, left knee down. Switch it out. Place the ball under the other knee. Place the ball under the other knee. And draw the toes up toward the ball. Stay right here. Maybe this is right where you stay. If you would like, lift the right leg up. Thigh parallel to the earth. Right heel goes to the back of the room. Maybe you stay right here. This is plenty of a challenge, especially if you're on the ball. If you'd like, lift the left arm, the opposite arm. Stretch and reach, feel really long. Strengthen through your spine and your low back. If you'd like, elbow to knee, once or twice or not at all. Reach and stretch, elbow to knee under the navel. Press, reach, stretch, and have fun. Left hand down, right knee down. Remove the ball. How was that? Take a breath or two. That kind of gets your heart rate going, doesn't it? All right, that's your bird dog on a ball. Now, you can use your weight, the ball, or nothing at all. Let's do fire hydrant and donkey kicks. Let's do it a little faster today. Place the ball or the weight or nothing at all behind your right knee. Give it a good squeeze. Draw your toes up towards your shin to be sure that you hold it and start to lift to the side of your room and donkey kick. Or, um, fire hydrant. So keep your right hip down, lift and lower, maybe pick up the pace, maybe try to lift the knee a little higher, maybe try to lift the knee a little more towards your armpit, and then maybe lift your ankle a little higher than the knee. Finish your donkey kick, or finish your fire hydrant, bring the knees back to meet at the bottom, and then lift your right leg up toward the back of the room. And let's do your donkey kick. So lift the thigh parallel, then bring it quickly down to meet the left knee. Lift and lower, lift and lower. Think of the foot like on a string going up toward the sky. Keep your right hip dialed down. And when you're ready, let's lift the foot really nice and high, really high. Right hip down. Now pulse the foot up, up, up to the sky. Pulse it up, 
little teeny pulses, little teeny movements. Your gaze is down, kind of between your thumbs. Lift the foot even higher. Now pulse the heel in, in, in towards your bottom. Little teeny kicks. Give yourself a swift kick in the behind, right? Breathe. <sighs> Finish. Hover the right knee next to the left. Go back to your fire hydrant pose. Lift and lower, lower and lift. And then let's finish. Hover the right knee next to the left. Redistribute your hips, getting the right hip a little bit lower, pressing equally into your mat with both hands. Lower the right knee down, switch it around. Bring your prop behind your left knee. Or no prop at all, it's totally good. <sighs> Neutral tabletop, stay right here. Lift your left knee up, draw your toes towards your shin. Start to lift your left knee to the side of the room. Lifts and lowers in your fire hydrant pose. Breathe and remember the little refinements. Maybe draw the knee more up toward the armpit. Maybe the ankle a little higher than the knee. Breathe, breathe, breathe. You can go high like a big dog on a fire hydrant or not so high. You just move your hips. Hover the left knee next to the right, and then lift the left foot up as if it's being pulled by a string up to the ceiling. Dial your left hip down, and then the knee comes back to meet the right one. Lift and lower the left leg. Lift, lower, kick high, kick high. Breathe. <sighs> now when you're ready, lift that foot nice and high. You can lift it a little bit higher, dial the left hip down. You can lift the foot a little bit higher. And then when you're ready, start to kick into your bottom. Kick the foot into your bottom. Breathe. You could also do this standing on a chair. I asked you guys a couple weeks ago how you preferred doing your donkey kick in your fire hydrant, if you like doing it from a tabletop position, or if you preferred doing it from the back of a chair. Most of you said you liked it in this position but you can shake it up and do it on the back of the chair. We'll shake it up another time. All right, squeeze your heel really close to your bottom and then pulse the entire foot up, 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 up to the sky. How are you doing with it? Breathe, Whoo, working those big muscles in your glutes. You can probably feel it about now. When you're ready, let's finish up. Hover the left knee next to the right. Start to lift to the side again in your fire hydrant pose, breathe. So those big glutes, you gotta keep them strong. They help with your foundation. When you're ready, finish. Knees meet on the mat, remove the ball, bring the ball to the top of your mat, spread your knees wide, sink your hips back, come into your wide-legged child's pose here. Maybe arms reach long to the top of the mat and you sink down, forehead to your mat. Press into your hands, Send your hips more back to your heels. Maybe find the ball underneath your fingers and place your hands on it. Take a deep breath in. And maybe a deep sighing breath out through your mouth as you let some of the tension go. How are you doing? All right, speaking of tension, <laughs> uh, challenges. This is a week of challenges. It's a month of challenges, one minute challenges. What we did last week was a one minute plank. Let's do it again. We're also gonna do crow. Let's do that too. These are little challenges that last one minute or this is the most important part, as long as they, you want them to be. So plank, try it. Lots of variations. All right, so you could stay with your knees wide, arms come forward a little bit and hinge forward, placing more weight into your hands. If it's too much on your wrists, you can ball your hands into fists or you can slip down to your forearms. Hands spread wide on your mat for a nice solid foundation. You could also press up against a wall. Step your, stepping your feet back, adjusting your hands so they are underneath your shoulders and find the sweet spot where you feel you're, that you're gaining more strength in your upper body. Now, we've been doing plank. You do the plank variation that you like or one that you haven't done for a while. Maybe you're down on your forearms and you still stay on your knees, elbows under your shoulders, or you press on up and stay long in your dolphin plank. You could also take a high plank. Take a moment and decide where you wanna be, and then I'm gonna set a timer for one minute. When you, are you ready? All right, 
let us begin. So take the variation of plank that you like, and even if it's for these five seconds have elapsed, even if it's just for five seconds, I don't even wanna say just, if it's for five seconds, good on you. Hold, breathe. We are into 15 seconds already. My hands are spread wide, wrists under shoulders for stability and strength in the arms. Core is engaged, so your belly is strong. Energy out your heels, press hard into your mat. We're halfway there, it's 30 seconds. If you've done 30 seconds and you wanna take a break, go for it. A break could be dropping to your knees. A break could be sending your hips high to a down dog. We're 40 seconds in, you got it. Breathe, breathe. You're strong, challenge your strength a little bit. Come on now, we've got 10 seconds left. If you're going for the full minute, you got it. Breathe, five seconds left, four, three, two, one, you're done. Come down to your knees, take a break, however you like. Maybe you stretch it out in a child's pose. I'm gonna grab a drink. You did it, however long you did it, you did it. It's probably more than your neighbor next door did planking today. Have a breath, have a drink, and let's start. Let's start over, start over. Always start over, think of it, it's fresh. Do what you can, be happy with what you did. Focus on what you did, not what you didn't. Don't think about that, let that go. You did your plank, however long it is. Let's do some other core stuff. All right, so come on down to a seated position. Extend your legs. Let's do frog crunches. Hands to prayer center. Legs can be long or a little bent. Try to slowly recline here. Slowly recline, maybe hold it for a second or two in one place, then lower a little bit more. Oh, your core is strong, isn't it? And that's what you want. A strong core helps with your balance. It helps with your foundation. Stay strong, lower all the way down. Once you are all the way down, bring your hands to your temples or lightly behind your ears. Bend your knees and open them up to the sides of the room. Now, let's start by lifting our chin just up toward the sky as you exhale. Elbows and knees stay open wide. Little teeny lifts and little teeny lowers. Do what feels doable. When you're ready, let's make this frog-like. Lift your legs up, bring your knees toward the midline and have your elbows and your knees touch. Open up your knees and your elbows and come back to your starting position. Do several of these, just move. Gaze is up toward the sky, chin is up toward the sky, knees lift and lower and open. <sighs> now let's finish up. Come down in your shoulders, send your legs long this time. Now bend your knees and peel your shoulders up. Bring your knees to touch your elbows. Straighten your legs toward the bottom of your mat. Come all the way down and do several of these. Long legs reaching toward the bottom of your mat, elbows opening wide and then touching the knees. Ah, <sighs> Breathe, remember to breathe. Best part, each breath is a new beginning. <sighs> and then let's finish up. Legs go long, arms go overhead, stick pose. Stick pose, stretch out what you got. It almost feels like bird dog. Fingers reach, toes reach, breathe. It's time for hundreds. Peel your shoulders up, arms down by your sides. Maybe lift your feet a little bit or a lot, or put the ball under your feet and start to move your arms as if you're patting the ground. Lift the legs a little higher, a little lower. Shoulders a little higher, a little lower. You decide. This is a move from Joseph Pilates. Breathe. Whew. Enjoy your hundreds, however many you do. Doesn't have to be a hundred. You just pat the ground till it feels right for you. And then finish. Come on down. Fully reclined. Stick pose again. Fingers reach. Toes reach. Take a few breaths. Wiggle your hips. And as you're ready, slowly press on up to a seated position. How was that? Did you like that? Whew. All right, crow pose time. I'm gonna talk you through it. Two blocks, 
if you wanna do this. This is our challenge for this week. Your core is strong. We did a lot with it today already. So two blocks, place them so they're about torso length apart. And that's obviously different for everybody. All right, come on up to standing and stand on your back block. Stand on your back block and get your balance. Maybe that's enough today. Stay right here and have fun. Just have fun, right? If you'd like, bend your knees and come on down. Bend your knees greatly. Bend your knees a lot. Send them wide to the sides of your mat. Now, I'll talk you through the rest, rest of this pose. Your block, position it so your forehead can rest on it. So you have to move it forward, back, whatever. You'll play with it a little bit more and you'll get it. Bring your hands down to your mat. Bring your palms all the way down to your mat. Then feel the shift. You felt this a moment ago when we did plank. So trust yourself here and bring your knees behind your triceps. Hinge forward, you're gonna rest your knees on your triceps. Hinge forward and just focus on that block in front of you. Hinge forward, maybe you gotta scoot it a little one way or the other. And then bring the weight into your arms and then bring your forehead down onto your block. Bring it on down if that feels right for you today. Doesn't feel right for me today, so I'm not gonna do it. But I'm gonna go to where I can go and I'm gonna be happy with what I can do. And you should do the same. I know it's more easily said than done. But as you balance here, balance the weight in your head. Knees are on your forearms. You're nice and tight. You're squeezed in. You got this. And if you fall out, no big deal. You got another breath. Try it again. Breathe and just have fun. When you're ready, that is your challenge for the week. When you're ready, come on out of your curl pose. How did you do? How did you like it? I didn't go all the way because I mentioned the other day I got a little bit of vertigo going on and you know, the ear crystal thing and all that stuff. So I'm taking a little easy with the inversions. You should do the same. All right, let's grab our weights, grab a drink. Ah, I'm gonna have a drink even though I didn't do curl. <laughs> and then let's come on up to standing with our weights. All right, how are you doing? It's all good, right? Okay, your choice, <clears throat> weights or your band. <clears throat> if you've got the band, you wanna place the center of the band under your feet and grab the edges of the band. I'm just gonna use the weights today. Bring the weights or the bands to your shoulders and lift, lift and lower. So you think of, think of coming into an extended mountain pose, arms lifted, and then bring the weights back to your shoulders. And if you want, one weight or the other. And don't have such heavy weights that you can't do much of it. You know, have lighter weights. Maybe you have uh, several different weight weights <laughs> that you use for different portions of our practice today. Our Yoga Plus. Yoga Plus lots of stuff. And I always wish this day were longer this day, this practice were longer. Maybe a little more foundation in the feet, spread your feet a little wider. Maybe you're lifting one arm or the other. Breathe through it, lift, lift. You got it, you're strong. Let's lift them up high to the sky. Take a little break here, and who would think lifting them is a break? Take a break, ah, breathe. Open up your arms, tee them out, tee them out. Hold right here. Now lift the weights, bring the weights to your shoulders and open. So the weights, arms are teed out and you're lifting here. Think of the strength in your upper back. Think of those beautiful shoulders that you are building. Ah, the strength in your shoulders, mobility, all good. Maybe you lift one arm and extend it. Maybe look toward that arm, bring it back. Maybe extend the other and look toward that arm. You alternate if you like, or do both arms at the same time. You're strong. Elbows are to the back of the room. You're breathing, you're lifting, you're strong. Your upper back is so strong. Awesome. Breathe. Let's finish here. Extend your arms long, flip your palms so they're face down. Now, little teeny pulses of the arms down, down, down. Ah, remember, look for the things you can do with the energy and the focus that you have. Little wins, little wins pave the way for big wins. 
finish up, arms down by your sides. Take a breath here, big breath in, <sighs> big breath out. We're gonna work the triceps now by going into a drinking bird. Lots of ways you can take this. Put a bend in your knees, hinge a little bit forward. Weights are heavy in your arms, just enjoy the little break here. If you would like, you can press on up to your balls of your feet and stay right here. The weights, you can also have your feet down. The weights, pulse the back of the weights toward the back of the room. Pulse, pulse, pulse. Chest is open, chest is lifted, you can feel it open. Pulse the weights to the back of the room. Little bend in your knees, maybe shift the weight back into your heels if you're flat-footed and stay here. Maybe come higher up onto the toes if you're up on your toes. Maybe sink your bottom a little bit lower. The weights, send them high, high, high to the back of the room, then pulse them in, in, in towards your low back. Keep your chest lifted and your gaze forward. Pulse those weights, squeeze them toward your low back. Breathe, you got it, breathe. Maybe you're breathing in and out of your mouth a little bit to let some of the heat go. It's all right, it's all good. When you're ready, finish up. Come back up to standing, feet flat on your mat, arms down by your sides. Stay right here, deep breath in. Ah, deep breath out. Serve the tray and pulse. So flip your hands so your palms are facing the front of the room. Lift your arms up so they're parallel to each other at about shoulder height and serve the tray. Little teeny pulses here. Breathe little teeny pulses, maybe alternate the pulses just for fun. Shake it up, break it up, something different. Gotta have fun, right? And remember, I always like to say this with our yoga. <sighs> Number one, is it safe? That's the most important thing. Are you doing what's safe for you? Number two, is it effective? Are you seeing positive changes in your body, your mind, your soul? And lastly, is it fun? It's gotta be a little fun, right? You gotta shake it up. All right, arms down by your sides. Take a big breath in ah, and a big breath out. Now the weights, flip them so your palms are facing the back of the room. Bring the edges of the weights to touch. Think that you have like on a, a space suit and it's the zipper. Your hands are down near the zipper, pull the zipper on up. Elbows toward the side of the room and then bring it on down. A few zip ups and zip downs. Breathe, ah, breathe, lift and lower. Elbows open wide. Breathe, take it all the way down, take it all the way up. How are you doing here? Having fun yet? Good, breathe. And when you're ready, let's finish up here. Arms down by your sides, take a breath. Big breath in, big breath out. Now your arms, bring your elbows up to shoulder height. Goal post your arms. Goal post your arms, hold it here. Squeeze your elbows more back toward the back of the room. You got it here. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the weights meet kind of at our nose and our elbows meet at mid chest. So draw your arms towards your chest, elbows and weights meet and pull them on back. Breathe, open and close. How are you doing? Ooh, this one's a challenge. Ah, <laughs> breathe. Now, a few more of these and Let's finish. Bring your arms down by your sides. Spread your legs a little bit wider. Heels in. Come into a squat. So come into a squat, kind of like you're going into our beloved horse pose. Now your weights. Bring your weights back to those goal-posted arms. Hold them here. Look up. Straighten your legs. Straighten your arms. Come on up. Come on down. Elbows down. Elbows open wide. Knees bend. Come on up. Up and down. Down and up. You got it. Breathe. Maybe you want to take a wider stance and go lower. Breathe, weights come up, knees straighten, come on down. Lift and lower, lift. You got it, you're strong. Yes, you are. And when you're ready, let's finish up with this pose. Arms down by your sides, legs back together. Let's go back to where we began. Weights to your shoulders, lift and lower. Breathe. You got it. <sighs> big breaths in, big breaths out. And let's finish. Place your weights on the ground and let's go into tree pose. For your tree pose, no weights. Arms are light and free, hands to prayer center. Maybe you've got a chair here for balance or maybe you come up against a wall. It's all good. 
weight into the left foot, weight out of the right, turn the knee to the side of the room, heel to the inside of the ankle, higher up onto the calf, or high up onto your thigh. Push the foot into the leg, and the leg back into the foot. Look up to where the ceiling and the wall meet, and find your variation of tree pose. Breathe, grow your branches. If you like, sway your branches. Just don't have your foot on your knee. Breathe, finish, hands to prayer center. Guide the knee to the front of the room. Plant the right foot next to the left, other side. Root equally back into your feet. Take this moment, and then let's do it on the other side. Root into your right foot. Left knee opens to the side of the room. Maybe you keep that left heel to the inside of the right ankle and stay right here. Maybe if you are staying here, a little more of a challenge would be to close your eyes. Maybe that's a lot more of a challenge. You decide. Place the foot wherever you like, just not on the knee. Press equally. Press palms together. If you like, grow your branches and sway them. Chest is lifted. You are strong. Hips are strong. You got it. Your crown of your head is going up, up, up to the sky. Hands back to prayer center. Guide the knee to the front of the room. Left foot meets right on your mat. Nice job. Let's go back into a horse pose. Spread your legs wide. Heels in slightly. Sh uh, shoulders are over your hips. Hands to prayer center. Sink low. Sink low and hold here. Maybe you stay right here or maybe you come up onto your toes. Gaze forward. Hold your pose, not your breath. Hold here, high on the toes. Now let's just pulse, stay up on the toes if you like, and little teeny pulses up and down. Little teeny pulses, high on the toes, shoulders over hips, breathe, focus. Find your drishti, a focal point. Don't be distracted. Focus, little teeny pulses up and down. <sighs> Come high up onto your toes, straighten your legs. Now put the bend back in the knees, sink low. How low can you go? Stay right here. Now alternate heel touchdowns. One heel comes down, then you come up onto the ball of the foot of the other side. Breathe, take it slowly or more quickly, you decide. Embrace the shake in the thighs. Finish up, come high up onto both balls of the feet. Hold here for a second and pulse, pulse, pulse. Finish, heels come down, arms go high, capital letter X, stretch it out in your pentacle-like pose. Breathe, <sighs> let's finish. Arms down by your sides, legs together, take a forward fold. Bring the crown of your head toward the earth, hold on to your calves, and once you've done that, a nice forward fold, come on down to your mat. Seated forward fold. Legs extend long. Just what you did, let's do it again here seated. Toes up toward the sky, arms lift, reach the arms forward, reach, stretch, arms parallel to each other. Bring your hands towards your feet, your calves, your shin, whatever you can reach, and then bring your gaze, your forehead towards your legs. Bring your nose towards your knees, if that's right for you today. Hug your knees in, breathe. Hug your elbows in towards your knees. And then finish. Come on back up to a seated position. Let's switch and grab the ball. Grab, that's not switching. Let's just grab the ball. I don't know why I said switch. All right, grab the ball between your thighs. Maybe hands to prayer center. You're squeezing the ball now. Soles of your feet are on your mat. Your knees are gonna be hip with distance apart because you're squeezing the ball. If you're not squeezing the ball, that's fine too. Hands to prayer center, come on back, all the way to reclined. Let's do bridge pose. Heels up toward your bottom, press your hips on up toward the sky, arms down by your sides, heels maybe up closer to your bottom, little teeny pulses of the ball in, in, in. No ball, that's okay, you got this. Imagine squeezing, the ball just adds a new dimension of fun to it. Breathe, don't let your hips sag. Press them higher up to the sky. Keep pressing the ball. Now, a nice tight squeeze on the ball. Hold it tightly and just pulse your hips. 
up to the sky. Hips up to the sky. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Now let's alternate. Squeezes of the ball, hips nice and high. Now, nice tight squeeze on the ball. Lift up into your toes and then work your ball of your feet back closer to your bottom. Lift, pulse, high, high, high. Squeeze the ball in, in, in. Nice tight squeeze, lift out of the hips. And then let's finish. Bring the soles of your feet back down. Press up through the hips one more time. Roll your spine down, one vertebra at a time. How are you doing? Now, when you're ready, remove the ball, remove or extend your legs long on your mat, and then let's flip over onto our bellies. Now, you can flip directly on over to your belly and let's go into our Superman pose. All right, so you're on your belly. Let your arms go long to the top of your mat. Legs spread wide at the base of your mat. Chin down on your mat. Superman pose. Let's start by just lifting your legs. Kind of balance on your pelvis maybe. Lift your legs, how does that feel? Can you lift them a little bit higher? Chin is down on your mat. Maybe legs come down, let's just do the arms. Maybe lift your arms up. Maybe you're balancing on your fingertips, that's fine. Maybe let's work it all together. Arms lift, legs lift, hold here in your Superman pose. Take your Superman pose into an airplane pose. Just bring, bring your arms, extend it long, sweep them back. Fingers, palms are face down, fingers spread wide, lift higher out of your chest. Then come back to your flying Superman. Breathe, do it again with airplane. Fingers go back, lift, breathe. Come on back to your Superman. Stretch, lengthen. Maybe you bring your legs down and your arms down. It's all right, it's all good. Lift and then finish. Hands underneath your shoulders. Press on up to a seal pose. If you like, arms are straight. Great compression of the low back, soften in your glutes. Finish up, press on up. Let's do a gentle camel. Bring your shoulders up over your hips. Hands to your low back, squeeze your elbows together, gaze forward or gaze up to your ceiling. You decide how far you wanna take it. Breathe and then finish. Come back to a natural standing on your knees position. Come on down, have a seat on your heels. Kinda makes you loopy, doesn't it? All right, nice job. We just have a few more minutes, oh my goodness. All right, so let's come on to your right side. Let's do those clamshells. So come to your right side, come onto your right forearm. Again, elbow under your shoulder, fingers spread wide, place the ball between your thighs, give it a good squeeze. You don't have the ball? Totally okay, there's no getting out of it. You got it. All right, lift out of your right side. And it's easy to sag, easy to sag, isn't it? This is a story of life, it's easy to sag. Lift. Lift a little higher, you got it. All right, start to squeeze this ball. Squeeze the ball between your thighs. Left arm, maybe you lift it up to the sky. Maybe you like it on your hip. Maybe you like it down as a little kickstand here. Squeeze the ball, then start to lift your ankles. Lift your ankles, more easily said than done, and then squeeze the ball. How do you like it? Take whatever works for you. Maybe you reach out of your top arm and reach to the top of front of, or to the side of your room. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And when you're ready, let's finish here. How are you doing? Are you liking it or not? <laughs> Bring the ankles down. Let's switch to the other side. All right, we'll do the other side. Come on to your left hip. Press into your left forearm. Fingers spread wide. Shoulder over elbow, always a good reminder. And then, how are you sagging? Lift. Stay here. Maybe lift your arm up. Maybe that'll help you realize the lift. Maybe take a big stretch before you even go into your clamshells. Place your hand wherever you like it to be and then start to squeeze that ball. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And if you like, ooh, if you like, do you like? I don't know. Maybe lift the ankles and then squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Breathe, squeeze, stay lifted in that low side body. Breathe, 
<sighs> and when you're ready, just about time to finish up. Maybe you just do a couple little squeezes with the ankles lifted. Maybe not at all. Just try it one or two times. See what you think. Then maybe next time you'll do five or eight or 10. Let's finish, <laughs> bring your knees on down. All right, remove the ball and let's go into a happy baby pose. All right, now come on to your back. Slowly bring it on back, shoulders down, bend your knees, hands capture underneath your knees. Left hand, left knee, right hand, right knee. Rock a little bit from side to side. Think of drawing little circles with your knees on the ceiling. Maybe make the circles bigger. Then work your little circles in the other direction, making them a little bigger. Come back to the midline of your body. Draw your toes up toward your shins. Hug your knees in toward your armpits. Maybe take your hands and capture your inner calves or capture your heels. So you're kind of back in like that frog-like position. Think of a little baby in a crib, nice and happy. Send one leg up toward the sky, then the other. Bring the knees back to the armpits, kind of like you did in your crow pose, right? All the poses work together to complement positive movement in your body. Maybe send your heels both high up to the sky, open up your legs big and wide in the letter V, let the pinky toes come toward the earth, then finish. Knees come back to the midline of your body, bend your knees, bringing the soles of your feet back down to your home base, your mat. All right, legs go long on your mat, legs spread wide, arms down by your sides, palms face up. Maybe grab your eye shade or your towel, cover your eyes and breathe in your final Shavasana pose. Big breaths in and big breaths out any way you like it. Maybe a few in and out of your mouth. And then you go back to your body's most efficient way of breathing, which is the mouth closed and the nose doing all the breathing. You do what works for you today. Big breaths in, big breaths out. Your shoulders, soften them. They worked hard for you today. We did a lot of lifting. So maybe you wanna wiggle them a little bit and then let them settle. Let them rest. Just let them rest all on their own, your shoulders. Let your arms be heavy. Your biceps and triceps are tired. You did that forearm stretch. Let the arm rest now. It needs rest. Legs are heavy. Let your glutes and your thighs relax. You did donkey kicks. You did fire hydrant pose. Oh my goodness, you stretched your glutes out in your wide-legged child's pose. Now it's time for rest. Come back to your breath and just breathe. I'll let you know when it's time to come out of this pose. Enjoy. Deep breaths in and deep breaths out. Arms are heavy, legs are heavy. You 
are at peace. Take a deep breath in and a deep, slow breath out. If you can stay longer in your Shavasana pose, stay here and enjoy your breath, each fresh new breath. If it's time for you to conclude the hour, start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Think back to toes pose, how much your feet went through. Think back to your forearm stretch. Move your arms, move your fingers, move your legs. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And when you're ready, take a big good morning stretch. Reach your arms high overhead. Point your toes to the bottom of the mat and do your big good morning stretch like you do before you even get out of bed in the morning. When you're ready, bend your elbows and your knees and roll into a fetal position onto one side or the other. Use your low arms bicep as a pillow for your head. Eyes are closed, head is heavy. Just savor the breath here. Big breath in, nice and steady. Consistent, constant, big breath out. Not easily distracted, that is you. When you're ready, maybe you keep your eyes closed and you press on up to a comfortable seated position. Bring your hands to prayer center. Press your thumbs lightly into your chest. Take a deep breath in as you take a big inhale. And a big sighing breath out as you soften your shoulders. Gently blink your eyes open. You did it. You did an hour long yoga plus practice where we threw in some weights, we threw in some bar, we threw in some Pilates and you moved your body. I hope you feel better in your body. In fact, you did a stress number in the beginning. Come back to that. What is it now? I'm sure it's a lot lower and you probably feel a lot more mobile and a lot more ready to take on the rest of your day. It's Good Friday. It's a good Friday, every day is a good Friday, and it is finished. From me to you, much love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Have a lovely weekend. Peace. See you on your mat tomorrow. Hey, Piper. Good girl. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good day. Somebody loves you, and those some bunnies need yoga. We all need to be more flexible. Tell your friends about our yoga. It's free for anybody and everybody, and they can join in anytime they want, every day of the week. Tell them about it. Have them join you. They can do it from the privacy of their own home. If you'd like to support our broadcast, you can visit our website. It's www.316yoga.com. And here's three words of advice for this week. Number one, find someone or something to love. Number two, find something to do, and hopefully that something to do is your yoga and you're enjoying it. And lastly, find something to look forward to. Hopefully that's your yoga too, but this week it's looking forward to doing crow pose. See you on your mat tomorrow.